Have you heard the phrase observe, don't absorb? What's that mean and how do you do it? And how does it help and why? So when you are around toxic people, okay, I'm gonna assume anyone watching this has been. So you know how when you are around a toxic person and even if you can describe it and name it and you know exactly what they're doing and you can call out the behavior in your head and you gray rock it and you try not to respond to it and it still gets to you, that's because you're absorbing some of the toxic that they're throwing at you. You are taking it on as your responsibility. You're taking it on as your fault. You're taking it on in some way. You've got them like in a heavy backpack on your back and you're carrying them through life. That is not observing and not absorbing. That is observing and taking it on. So to not absorb it means to let that person be exactly who they are, to allow that person to have their perspectives, to have their negativity, to have it all and have it be theirs, not yours. So let's talk more about what this all is. It's not what you see and feel and sense around that person. That is the observation. It's to try your hardest to not take it on as having to do anything about it, having to respond to it, having to react to it. We feel the need to justify, defend ourselves, protect ourselves and all of that. When we know what we're dealing with, why are we doing that? We're doing that because we can't stand the the words coming at us and the gaslighting coming at us and it it twists us up in our heads thinking we're supposed to do something about it but really if we want to stay safe and protected from toxic people it's about letting their words mean very little staying focused inside yourself and allowing others to be who they are is a form of mindfulness that can get you to state of a more relaxed life because it is not your responsibility to fix others, to make others behave better, to get others to see what they're doing that's wrong. If you're continuing to do that, you're entering into a cycle where you're now trying to control the situation and then it becomes your problem. If it's never your problem, you can simply observe it. Some people like to visualize a protective bubble around themselves and they like to imagine that anything that they don't want near them stays on the outside of that bubble. I look at it a little differently. I like to imagine that whatever is coming toward me can flow right through and that only what I wish to pay attention to can hold my attention. So if somebody is gaslighting me, I like to imagine it just flowing through and being the most boring thing I have ever heard in my life. It does not hold my attention. It cannot harm me because it's just gonna flow right through me. And if somebody is kind and I catch that in my observation, then maybe I wanna engage with it. Maybe I wanna engage with the kindness and maybe I want to have a relationship with that person who is kind and therefore I don't need to let it flow through me quite as fast, right? I can't hold on to their kindness either, but I can notice it longer, right? It isn't their being kind to me is not because of me. It's because they're kind, a kind person, but I don't have to hang on to it or I don't have to do anything with it, but I can choose to engage in it longer, which then prolongs the situation and which then fills me with the feelings of their kindness. So here's the problem. When people are gaslighting you all the time, when they're projecting on you all the time, when they're blame shifting, when there's a lot of word salad and it's really confusing, it's really, really hard to see what is yours and what is theirs. So we have to start getting in touch with our feelings of knowing what is ours and what is someone else's. Usually when I ask someone, when they tell me a story about a narcissist or a toxic person in their life, and they're really upset about something someone's doing. And if I ask the question, whose is that? Who's, who does that belong to? They almost always know it isn't theirs. They almost always, they almost always know it didn't come from them. They can feel it. They can sense it. You can almost have a feeling of lightness or heaviness around it that 
makes it really obvious whether it was yours to begin with or whether it was someone else's. If you can get in touch with that, however that works for you, you can then know what's yours to engage with, what's yours to pay attention to, and what's yours to let go of and hand it back to the other person. By doing that, by handing it back, by saying this isn't mine, I'm not going to deal with it, you free up so much energy, so much emotional space inside yourself. And your life gets more and more calm and much better pretty quickly because you're no longer taking on the toxic crap that's coming your way from other people. Allowing yourself to be yourself is another way of observing and not absorbing. Being as much yourself as you possibly can be. Stop trying to do things to please other people. Stop behaving in ways just so that other people will be pleased with who you are. You just be you and you be as you as you possibly can. And if you don't know what that is, then there is a good goal for this year to start working on because the more authentically you can meet this world, the less you're going to take on of other people. You really won't because you will be experiencing life in the moment as it's happening instead of trying to control what's going on around you through artificially behaving in certain ways that are codependent, are people pleasing and all of that, which is not who you are, it's who you were groomed to be by people who needed you to be that way, right? And it, when you're not doing all that stuff, there's all kinds of freedom and you no longer are absorbing the stuff people are giving you that's toxic because you don't have any desire to fix it. You got to remember you are not responsible for others. You were not responsible for the toxic people in your life and you're not responsible for making other people happy. You are responsible for yourself. You're responsible for your children and you're responsible for yourself, right? You're responsible to take your life and make the best of it, to make the most out of what you can with what's going on around you and with the world as you are perceiving it. And sometimes because of all the toxic stuff that's happened in your life, you don't know who you are. You're in a position maybe where you're like, yeah, but I don't even know what that means. I don't know who I am outside of being codependent. Of course, I'm a people pleaser. I've always been a people pleaser since I was a little kid. So start doing things in life that are small and bring you a feeling that will come over you that does not feel like someone else. I do not know how to describe that otherwise. It's like, so take any small thing that you enjoy doing and try and be present to it. Try and be engaged in it. Try and focus on the thing you're doing and yourself as you're doing it. If you're doing it and suddenly you start laughing, whatever it is, notice that you're laughing and how delightful it is to hear your own laughter. Okay, as you're doing this, you start to become more aware of who you are and less interested in what the world thinks of you. We spend way too much time worrying about what other people think. And we have been groomed and trained to be really, really concerned about what other people think. Otherwise, what? We would have had toxic people being horrible to us. So here's the thing. All of that is so that you can know who you are, so that you can be more present to yourself. And so that when someone who is toxic or when a situation that is not good for you is presenting itself, you can walk away because you don't feel the need to jump into codependent behavior or to jump into people pleasing or to try and manipulate things so that people like you or, or any of that. Okay. You don't feel that need because you are confident and comfortable with being who you are. You don't need others to externally validate you all the time. You can validate yourself. So but then what? So then toxic people come and they go and they're in your life and they are gaslighting, they're projecting, they're shaming, they're blaming, they're playing head games, they're playing dumb, they are accusatory, they're vilifying, they're doing all of these things that feel really hard not to react to. They make you angry, they make you frustrated, they make you feel shame, they make you feel guilt. Here's the thing that you need to be able to grow to where other people can't make you, right? That you see the manipulation 
and you say, no, thank you. I don't want any manipulation because you feel it coming on. You feel your own shame rising up. You feel your own self, old self-loathing screaming in your ear, right? You feel it all coming up and you realize, wait a minute, this situation isn't something I need to be around. I do not need to absorb the negativity that's coming at me from this toxic situation or person. And I need to step away. So how do you do that? Well, you don't engage in it. You simply don't engage in it. You notice it, you catch it, and you step back. You Basically, I like to picture it's on a platter and I hand the platter back or I just drop it on the ground or it's in a box and I just chuck the box on the ground. I don't need to engage in it. You can step away and take some breaths, recenter, recalm, come back to the space that is you, not you in reaction to something toxic, and go on with your day. If you understand what you need from the situation, so say you have a narcissist that you're parallel parenting with, and you need, only thing you actually need is the information that will ha- allow for the parenting time or whatever it is for that situation. You need one little thing, say, from the situation, and that is an answer. Okay, and say they're throwing a bunch of toxic nonsense at you and trying to get you to engage and trying to pull you back under and pull you back into a dynamic with them that puts them in control and you wish to not absorb and to simply observe it, then you see all of that that they're doing and you tell yourself, I will not engage you if you know what it is you need. I need to know what time pickup is. Simple. Until you get that, you stay as engaged as you have to be, but you wait patiently for them to go all the way through their word salad until they give you the answer. All right. And then you don't engage in the word salad because then it's now a dance with them and we don't want to dance with them. If you need something else from them, if you need validation, if you need their approval, if you need their kindness, them to be nice to you again, if you're needing those things, you're more than likely going to engage. So it's fortifying those things that you think you need from toxic people and getting them other places in your life, even if it's only from yourself. And then realizing you do not need that from that toxic person so that you can disengage. It's about refocusing your attention when you feel yourself being pulled under by the toxic. And it's about boundaries. It's about setting boundaries for what is good for your life, what is good for your well-being, and what keeps you being the best you you can be. If you can figure out why your boundaries slip, where you're weak with your boundaries, what is it that you feel and think when you're trying to place the boundaries, then you can start working on being healthier with your boundaries so that you are no longer engaging so much with toxic people. If you need help, my name is Lise Colucci. There is lots of information in the main description of every video and lots of places to find help. So check it out. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.